Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer from space. Out, space, space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. The Human Hunt, written by Clockinator. Milky Way, Western Hemisphere, inside a local star system with 12 planets and 37 moons. A small military vessel with a maximum crew complement of 50 hovers over a planet covered in lush forests, deep oceans, and clean rivers. This vessel, a training craft of the Croctal Empire, sports a light armament of dual photon cannons, a pair of anti-missile ballistic cannons, and a few Sidewinder missiles. Despite the ship's vulnerabilities, few would be foolish enough to attack it, given its call sign and who it belongs to. Aboard the vessel, aptly named the Scaled Eye, a tall and imposing crocodilian paces back and forth before ten other significantly smaller and younger members of his species. As bipedal beings, they sport thick legs, hands which end in steel-rending claws, and a tail which allows them to keep their balance. Additionally, as highly evolved crocodiles, they also possess huge, elongated mouths capable of crushing anything which enters their maw. The Crackdell Commander, a blue-scaled fellow with blood-red eyes, folds his claws behind his back, and he assumes a dignified posture as he slowly paces back and forth in front of the smaller crocodile before him. Ah, you have all eagerly anticipated this day for four years now. You passed your training, and soon you will prove yourselves as true-blooded crocodile. The commander pauses to gesture out the bridge's window towards a beautiful green orb floating in space. This planet is known as Taurus II. Once, it was home to our former enemies, the Kasu. Now, it belongs to our glorious empire. It is our personal playground, one where we can set up training exercises for hot-blooded youths such as yourselves. The commander's words ring with self-absorption, pride, and an overblown ego, but the sheer conviction behind them fills the recruits' hearts with ease. His confidence spills over into their thoughts, making them believe that he can do anything in this moment. Don't get cocky, Growl, the commander says, warning his pupils. Today is part of your initiation. You will undergo a brutal test that has sent many promising warriors to the Forbidden Swamp. While tragic, their deaths are a warning to us all, and especially you. You must not act in complacency. This test will decide your future in the Crackdale Empire. Your only choices are to flee or fight. The recruits nod along, listening intently to the commander's words. Today, I'll send all ten of you to the training grounds together. Rawr! This test will require that you work together to achieve a common goal. As warriors, you will often have to battle enemies in teams, and so your individual combat prowess will be less important than your ability to unify. I care not who you designate as leader, the support, or any other such roles. You will decide amongst yourselves who amongst you is Alpha. Now, regarding your mission, the commander says, motioning with his hands to summon a holographic projection of a naked, bipedal alien before himself. During the next week, you will engage in a brutal hunt, one which will upend every notion you have regarding Cructal supremacy. One of the recruits leans forward to stare at the floating holograph, with wide eyes. Grog, Commander Rockfist, isn't that a human? Grog, a human indeed, Rockfist replies. None of you young bloods may have seen one in the flesh before, but doubtless you have watched many documentaries regarding their appearance. Another recruit pipes up, 
this time a purple-scaled male. Rog, Commander Rockfist, are we to hunt this human? Something about him looks different than the hollow videos our instructor showed us. Rockfist's eyes take on a curious glint. Ah, so you noticed. Excellent eyes. Recruit Stormjaw. I am sure most of you have heard stories of the Precursor's reappearance 500 years ago. When they appeared, the humans seemed a benign threat to most of the galaxy. But we, Crocktail, had already experienced the horrors once before. We knew the feats of which they were capable. Simply put, if a hundred of you young bloods were to face off against the monsters in our midst, the humans of today, you would all die. You would not even be able to cry out for your mothers, so pitiful would your deaths be. The commander begins pacing again, his eyes taking on a distant look. Humanity has already swelled to 500 million members, a trifle compared to the number of the Redux, the Malalai, and the other sentients. But those numbers mean nothing. A single, well-trained human can take out dozens of threats before they close the distance. Even I, with all of my years serving under the Thulbuk, would never stand a chance against a human. That is why we have altered the parameters of your test, Rockfist continued. Modern humans are far too terrifying for you to defeat. Therefore, we have mimicked the DNA of ancient humans to create composite clones of their Neanderthal, which was one of the oldest recorded human ancestors that we could find. This fellow here will be your opponent. Compared to this era's humans, he is a dim-witted simpleton, incapable of comprehending technology or advanced military tactics. Recruit Stormjaw. Rounds. Gag, no offense, Commander, but this seems a bit uh, easy. If we are to hunt this uh, Neanderthal, then won't we possess decisive advantage? Is that what you think? Rockfist asks, smiling slyly. You'll go to the planet unarmed and without any defensive equipment. Admiral Kilgara designed this test to stress you to your absolute limits, and therefore, he placed the Neanderthal on the planet one full year ago. You will enter the human's territory, his domain, and you will face him with whatever traps he has laid, crude and primitive though they may be. Only by slaying him within one week will you achieve victory. Rockfist gestures to a nearby female Kraktal, someone with grey scales wearing a simple white uniform. Grah! This is Researcher Gonjina. She is one of the Kraktal who created the Neanderthal. Gonjina, please enlighten my recruits. The researcher nods, then takes a few steps towards the holographic image. She summons another image, this time of a slimmer human, one much better resembling the modern ones all the recruits have seen. Do not underestimate the Neanderthal, Gonjina says, her tone icy. Current era humans are smart and dexterous. They employ a million tricks to deceive and confound their foes, but they can also resort to raw technological superiority to crush their enemies. The Neanderthal may not even have 1,000 tricks at his disposal, but he makes up for it with his sheer body size. Look here at the fellow's abdominal muscles, Gajuna says, gesturing to the Neanderthal's stomach. As an omnivore, he can consume practically anything to restore energy. Ancient humans were even more adept at their modern counterparts at foraging and hunting, so you will not be able to defeat him in endurance, especially when you cannot consume plants to survive. Likewise, note the difference in the Neanderthal and modern humans' muscular and skeletal structures. The Neanderthal stands two heads taller, and his body is better built to withstand damage. While inferior to the crocodile scales, you should only underestimate his defenses at your own peril. That's right, Rockfist says. The Neanderthal may be dim-witted compared to our era's enemies, but he is more than a match for the likes of you. 
To kill this ancient human, you will need teamwork and strong leadership. But most importantly, a firm heart. Researcher Gugina nods at Rockfist, then takes a step back, returning the floor to him. The commander takes another minute of hatching out the specific parameters of the mission, then gestures to the pilot. Set us down just outside the Neanderthal's territory. Use these coordinates. After Rockfist pulls out a datapad and sends the land coordinates to the pilot's console, she nods. Yes, commander. When it's pass, the lightly armored craft descends through the planet's atmosphere, jarring the inhabitants slightly, but not causing any actual harm. Once it reaches the ground, it pops open in the side hatch and extends an exit ramp, revealing a gorgeous world outside. Ah, this planet is a veritable oasis, Rockfist boasts. The Talvak Kisakundras plans to turn Taurus II into a second homeworld for our people soon. The vicious predators here are a bit worrying, but with time, we will prevail. The commander steps outside and gestures to the door. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out there and begin the human hunt. Yes, commander, all the recruits cry in unison. As the young crocodile depart the vessel and head towards the nearby forest, Commander Rockfist closes the hatch, then returns to the bridge. His pilot turns to look at him. Commander, do you think these soft scales will succeed in killing the human? Rockfist smirks. Right, I forgot. This is the first time you've observed Admiral Kogara's training method. Fifty years ago, you and I trained the old way, by slaying ten vicious predators on hostile worlds all by ourselves. Compared to hunting one human with a group of ten, our test was much too easy. Commander Rockfist eyed the holographic human, admiration glowing in his eyes. What fine predators these creatures are. They evolved on a world ripe with threats that wished to kill them. They took control, subdued the planet, and then fought aliens far beyond their comprehension, with technology defying imagination. No, Miss Vorkan, the commander says to his pilot. My pupils will not defeat the human. In fact, they aren't supposed to. That was never the true intent of this exercise. The commander's eyes glow with hunger. It is the human who will hunt them. They are his prey. Only the fittest will escape his clutches. The pilot nods. I see. Truly, this test is most unfair. Perhaps one or two of the recruits will survive and join the ranks of the Kraktal elites. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.